Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining the today's session on op Azure Open Telemetry. So, um, as the topic says, we are going to explore Azure Open Telemetry, and uh, today we have CG Villafranga, who is going to take us through the topic. So, he is a senior developer and also a Microsoft MVP. And he's going to help us understand the open telemetry and how you can get started. Before we get into the session, I just want to mention that uh, uh, if there are women uh, who are getting into tech, there are opportunity from code without barriers. If you are into tech or kind of trying into exploring tech, there's opportunity for uh, from code without barriers for free. You can sign up using the link shared in the chat box if you're interested into it. Also, there is a certificate of participation. Also, the recording of session will be shared on our YouTube channel. So that's uh, um, the main things that you need to know, and we can. Yep. All right. Um, I think I can continue right now, sort of great. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So, yeah. The first and foremost, thank you everyone for joining this session. Um, I know it's Saturday, but still, you chose to spend your time um, with me with Azure OTA and App Insights. So, yeah. Um, welcome everyone. You now have fifty-seven participants. Yeah, that's a lot already. So, yeah. Um, I think you know what are the topics that we are going to discuss. So, we will be focusing on. Azure OTAL and Application Insights, or also known as App Insights. So, yeah, um, I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with um, OTAL or what we call Open Telemetry and Application Insights. So, this is actually the purpose of our um, session. So, just to let you know, or just to have an idea, or teach you how to start with Open Telemetry, what is the use of Open Telemetry, and at the same time, how we can connect it to Application Insights. So, yeah, let's get started. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Before everything else, um, if yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure you don't know me yet. I am CJ Villafranca. So I am a Filipino developer, which is based in the Netherlands. So I'm uh actually Filipino, but I'm already living in the Netherlands for almost um for two years. Uh, and I basically write code. I teach people, and I speak in conferences, sessions, and other meetups, just like this one. And um, why do I do that? Because I love teaching people. I love um, speaking in uh, different conferences. And yeah, it's fun to meet a lot of people. It's like um, I'm not the only one teaching. And um, I also learn from other people as well. Right. Okay. And I am a developer, uh, basically. So by the way, sorry, can you see my screen, right? Um, is it uh, visible enough or I can zoom in? I think we should zoom in. Uh, okay, sure. Like, uh... yeah. Not sure if I can still zoom in on my. Um, let's see. Unfortunately, I can't. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, later. Um, just let me know if it's not uh, that clear. But yeah, this is the highest resolution it can get. So, um, yeah. As I have mentioned, I'm a developer here in the Netherlands. So I've been here for two years already. So I've been uh, in the industry for um, 10 years. So yeah, it's actually a mix. So I'm a developer um, slash uh, architect in my uh, startup company as well. So yeah, I've been into a lot of stuff, especially in Azure and infrastructure as well, right? So I'm also a community leader and speaker. So just like Steva, that dev, I also have my community in the Philippines, which is Angular Philippines. So even though I'm already living in the Netherlands, I'm still involved in um, community work. So Angular Philippines is my home community. So what I do there is I organize a lot of events, um, speaking sessions just like this one, and even mentoring. So um, other than Steva, that dev guys, if you want to join us, um, you are free to join. So we are not just teaching Angular um, or Angular framework. We are also teaching a lot of stuff um, related to web and mobile development and um, specifically cloud development. Right. 
And uh, lastly, I'm also an author. So I've authored one book already, which is um, full stack development um, with Angular and uh, Java. So um, it was released last year, December 2023. Um, oh, sorry, the 2022. So it's already been here for almost two years. Um, and yeah, if you want to learn full stack development with um, a mix of cloud deployment using Azure, so you can um, you can grab our book. So it's named Spring Boot and Angular. So it's easy to um, search for it. Just type my name or just type my name with the title Spring Boot and Angular and you will be able to find it in Amazon. So yeah, um, nice to meet you guys. I know there's a lot of people already now. Now it's 72. So um, that's me, uh, Seiri. So other than that, what I do is I'm also a Microsoft MVP. So as a Microsoft MVP, I do talks a lot. So I, you will see me in a lot of conferences in my previous conferences, um, basically speaking about um, Microsoft products or other um, technologies with JavaScript and TypeScript. <laughs> okay, All right. So yeah, what's our top objective for today? So why are you here, guys? What are the things that you will learn in this session? So first one is basically what? So what is OTEL and what is Application Insights? So um, why is it there? Um, what is the use of OTEL or Open Telemetry? What is the importance of it um, when it comes to building applications or monitoring your application? So yeah, what is OTEL? And next is why OTEL is important. So yeah, we are building applications. OTEL is not really like um, the basic of building applications or the basic foundation, but it's more of like another thing that we need, especially for enterprise applications. And yeah, why is it really important for large applications as well? So we will also discuss that. And lastly, is a lightning fast demo for open telemetry and application insights. So I just prepared some um, basic examples for us um, using open telemetry. So it's both for front end and back end. So you will see on how to connect Azure Application Insights with OTEL and JavaScript, Angular, and Node.js, right? All right, so yeah, this is the first question I have for you guys. So what is OTEL? So is someone familiar with Open Telemetry or OTEL or someone have used OTEL in their applications? So you can actually go to the chat and um, please tell me if you are already familiar with OTEL. I'm um, I'm very happy to know uh, which you guys are using Odal already. So is someone familiar with Odal? <clears throat> no, no worries. It's, if it's your first time hearing that, it's it's great. So I'm very happy to introduce Open Telemetry and what is the use of Odal. So yeah, if others are familiar already, please let me know. I'm very happy because OTEL, it's not just for Azure, right? It's more of like a standard API that we use to collect data and other um, metrics, events, and traces for our application. So it's not just for Azure, but um, in our examples, um, we will be using Azure App Insights to um, visualize our data being collected by Open Telemetry. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, if it's the first time you're hearing that, that's fine. Uh, it's very okay, guys. I I have I've adjusted my presentation for you to absorb it easily for um, especially for the one beginning with Otel. So no one, no one is no one have ever heard of Otel. All right, okay, that's fine. So Otel, so it's a short or a short term for Open Telemetry. So, yeah, next, All right? So, I just grabbed it from Google. So, this is actually how Google um, describes OTEL. So, Open Telemetry provides a single open source standard and set of technologies to capture and export metrics, traces, and logs from your cloud native applications and infrastructure. So, this is from Google actually. So, if we will able to summarize this description from Google, so the three most important Keywords I would say is the metrics, um, traces, and logs. So the ex um, exporting of metrics, traces, and logs. This is actually the basic use of Open Telemetry or OTEL. So it just collects data from your applications. Um, this data are the metrics, the traces, and the logs. So this data will be explained later. What is the importance of this data that uh, that is being collected? So. Yeah, it basically just collects data, but what are these data? Okay. 
So what is open telemetry used for? So another description from Google. So it monitors the health of microservices applications. So it's not just microservices, it's basically all of the applications that we have. So it can actually monitor your backend applications, your databases, even your front end, but for front end, it's using another SDK. So it's more of like monitoring the health and performance of your application. So it captures metrics and traces of your applications in distributed systems that helps you understand if your applications are running as designed. So Odell is not really for building the applications. So Odell is being performed or being designed and being implemented when your application is already built. So Odell is more of like your observability. So it allows you to know if your monitor, if your microservices or your application is still healthy. So basically that's Odell, that's open telemetry. It just allows you to be a god of your application, to know everything what is happening on your application. And next, it's an attribute resource usage to different user groups. So it helps you capture request that come that is coming out or coming in on, in your application between microservices and you can also share systems by the group where it's originated so for example you have a very complex architecture on your application and you need to check the communication in event bus or in microservices so otel can help you with that one so that that is basically one of the major importance of having open telemetry in your application so next is create prioritization in request among shared resources. So you can actually group your request that is happening in your applications, um, whether if your requests are sharing resources, and you can also prioritize correctly which requests can be on the top. So yeah, you can actually group requests. You can check all of the requests that is happening on your applications. So. Um, on the things that I have discussed, so there are many things um, that Odell is doing, but the main streamline or the baseline of open telemetry is basically to check the health of your applications. So that's the main usage of Odell. So it's like a power that is given to you that you can see all of the things that are happening to your application. So yeah, Odell is very important, right? So you can now see the importance of having open telemetry in your applications. So yeah, um, when I was a developer, uh, I didn't much know about Odell also when I also when I was also starting up, um, developing applications because as developers, we are actually focused on developing our applications, right? We are building, writing our code, we write our functions, we write our features. That's the major we would say that's the major um, important or the most important things as a developer. So we need to, to accomplish our tickets. We need to accomplish our features for our app. We need to keep our app um, more features or have more features. And that's the things that we can, um, that we're always thinking of as developers. But yeah, um, how did I know about Otel? So how, how did I know that, hey, Otel is very important. So yeah, there's actually a story for us and a scenario that uh, happened uh, to me in a specific company that Odell is very, very important. So yeah, uh, I'll just give you one story, guys. On uh, It's like an eye-opener for me that we should really need an Odell for applications, especially, especially for enterprise applications and known companies. So yeah, once upon a time, yeah, we are we are spending our evening peacefully. So yeah, I'm just having a dinner. Um, we're just having a, um, a dinner with my wife. So it's actually a very peaceful evening. So I, I don't care about my application. It's running peacefully and it's um, serving the clients and customers. So yeah, it's uh, a very, very nice evening. I don't care anything about my uh, job. So everything is running. So yeah, everything is running, went, um, running fine. It's running well. Then suddenly, I saw some notifications in Slack and I saw some notifications in Azure. So Azure suddenly went crazy on alerts. So what happened? So this is really suspicious. My app is working fine. Our service is working fine um, before that. And I'm just seeing a lot of alerts. So yeah, from this, this is my mood. 
I went to this. So it's, oh my goodness, what is happening to our server? So I have no idea what's happening. But the good thing about it is I have alerts. So I'm notified what is happening on our servers, especially on the Azure infrastructure. So what did I do? So I stopped for a moment. I opened my laptop and I check our application, our infrastructure end to end. So we have an application Angular. We also have our application JavaScript and we also have our database, which is also hosted in Azure. So the good thing is we have our OTEL implemented. So in Azure, we have our Angular application in a container app. So it's being uh, monitored by application insights and our Node.js, which is on the middle, which is also using OTEL SDK, which is being interpreted by application insights. And we also have our database, which is also being monitored by application insights. So everything is being implemented by application insights and OTEL. So that's the very good thing about it, because if we don't have this OTEL or application insights, I will be going crazy. I don't know what's happening anymore. And there's really a lot of alerts going on that our server is like um, having a high resource CPU, the, the request is like going crazy. Then I will not have no idea that our app is not working anymore. Right? So yeah, OTEL allows me to check the things that are happening on my application. So I check the front end, I check the back end, and I check the database. So yeah, I saw some spike on our application. So yeah, it's really absurd that we receive a lot of requests. And we can see that on the database that there are a lot of queries. And on the back end, there's also a lot of requests. And yeah, we are thinking that, OK, this is not a problem for our application. But we can see that there are a lot of requests incoming. So that's really absurd, right? So it's absurd, but the good thing is I already have an idea of what is currently happening. Okay, So this is on the top of my mind. Something's not right. And it's an external request going inside on our application. And it's not a common thing that happens every day. So from, for example, our application, it's like the, the estimate is for like um, 10,000 requests or maybe less than 10,000 requests per day, the application went very high. So the request is around 200,000 to 300,000. So that's not common anymore. And you will assume that you are being hacked. So there's a DDoS attack. So if you don't have that OTL, then you will be blinded and you will not block that request. So that's the major importance of OTL. So we already have an idea that this is not a problem or this is not an issue for our application. So yeah, you can see the importance, right? So we know what is happening, even though the requests are external, even though the problem is an external issue. So OTL is very important in that case. So yeah, it's already burning. And the good thing is, even though it burned totally down our servers, our infrastructure, so OTEL gave us into right decisions. So we know already the solution for that. So we need to block some requests and we need to have some unauthenticated APIs to be um, uh, to be prevented uh, by spamming or DDoS by using CAPTCHAs. So that's the thing that we need to do. So OTEL gave us the um, the visibility that what are the things we need to do to prevent this kind of situations. So that's how OTIL works, right? So this is just one, um, this is just one scenario on how OTIL saves us in attackers or in hackers, especially on if our infrastructure is going down, right? So yeah, that's like a short story on to give you guys an idea why OTIL is very important or why App Insights is very important in your application. So yeah, going back to OTEL. So OTEL with Azure is providing suite for products for collection of telemetry data in a standardized way. So in the previous implementation, 
when we try to col collect um, data, metrics, and events, we are only using app, um, app in application insights SDK. So this is the old way, actually. So it's a library or an instrument an instrumentation library for different applications or framework, and it collects data just like what Open Telemetry is doing. The problem is, application insight SDK. It's only available for application insights for Azure. What if if you want to use other platforms as well? So Azure is now embracing Open Telemetry as well. Otel is also um, compatible with application insights platform and other platforms as well, like um, Grafana or Jaeger. So you can actually use it in different platforms if you want to interpret your data with um, different providers. So it also consumes data for using created experience on Azure Monitor and local tools. So um, Azure Monitor, it consists of different services and um, it can also use Open Telemetry as the collector of your data. Okay, so yeah, um, I will just give you an overview on how OTEL works in applications. So first, you have your OTEL SDK. So OTEL SDK means that this is the SDK that you will use for your applications if it's for example, it's Java, .NET, .NET um, Node.js, or Python, um, whatever applications that you're using. So you can use OTEL SDK. Um, this OTEL SDK, it includes the iLogger, um, which logs some um, information. So it's more of like an error message, info, uh, warnings on your application. So this is basically the iLogger. The meter is for the metrics. So this is basically for the performance of your application. So it basically refers to the CPU usage, um, the input output, or the memory. So anything that um, that is related to performance and activities of your application. So basically the best example is for the route changes. So these are the things that OTEL can provide and OTEL can, OTEL can collect. So this is the OTEL SDK. And under the hood, we also have instrumentation libraries. So Application Insights is an example of instrumentation library, but um, we are now using Open Telemetry uh, as we stitch all of the things or the data that we need to collect. Then we have the OTEL SDK. So we have the input, the logger, for example, the metrics and the activity. So we need to have an output for this data. So the one producing the output are the exporters. So the exporters or the example of exporters are Azure Monitor Exporter and the OTLP Exporter. So the basic um, differences of these two is Azure Monitor Exporter is basically for application insights. So it allows us to interpret all of the things that we collected from our applications going to the application insights. So it's, ju it's just converting our data into a readable output for application inside platform to interpret it into a visual manner. OTLP exporter, so this is more of like the generic exporter that we are using that we can use in different platforms as well. So it can be used to be an output for OTEL collector. So OTEL collector can also um, produce the output for different platforms and it could also be used by Jaeger. And if I remember correctly, OTLP exporter can also be used by Aspire. Um, platform. So under the hood, this is just how OTEL works in different applications. Okay. So yeah, you, you are hearing about OTEL Open Telemetry and you are also hearing about application insights. So maybe you are confused already. Is there a difference between the two? Um, I would say yes, there are difference between the two. So I will explain you what application insights is. So Application insights. It's just basically visualizing the data, the, the data collected to monitor applications. So think of um, think of that application insights is the platform itself. So this is the service itself to visualize the data being collected by the open telemetry. So open telemetry is more of like the standardized way. So Azure is embracing open telemetry because it can be used by different applications. So um, the first time I used Azure, they are using the Application Insights SDK. So it's a good SDK. However, it's only tied up to Application Insights platform. So SDK versus platform, it's also different. SDK is more of the library that we use to collect the data. It's the instrumentation. And the platform itself is the one visualizing it. 
So the problem with that is, as I mentioned, the SDK application insight is only for application insight platform. So when Azure has released Open Telemetry Distro, so it's called OTEL Distro. So OTEL Distro also collects the data um, from your application. However, it, it's not binded or it's not bound to application insights. So you can also use the data being um, collected or the output of the OTEL SDK to other platforms as well. So that's the good thing about OTEL SDK. So OTEL SDK is like the standard output. So think of it just like a JSON object. So the JSON object has a standard schema that can be interpreted with different applications or different platforms. So it's not just application insights. So that's the very difference of these two, right? So um, going back to the application insights, it's the visualization of the data collected to monitor application. So it's basically a platform for um, Azure. So it's available in Azure where you can visualize all of the things that you have collected. Um, for OTEL, you can, uh, yeah, you can, in, it can actually collect data, but it's very hard for you to interpret it if it's not visual, right? It's just like a series of texts, a series of requests that you will be hard to interpret if you're just a human and um, you just read all of that data. So you need an interpretation, you need a visualization. So that's where application insights um, comes into place. So um, if your data um, is being collected, so there's a data source and data collection and routing. And if this data is being collected, so it will be going to the, um, uh, the insights platforms. So we have different insights, but we will be focusing on the application insights. So application, we have four insights. So that's application insights, container insights, um, VM insights, and network insights. So the main difference is the name itself. So application insights, it basically monitors your applications um, that is deployed anywhere else. So it's just an um, it's just an uh, application with a manual instrumentation. So we are connecting OTEL SDK, for example, in our .NET application. And other insights, it basically monitors, um, for example, for container insights, it basically monitors your containers, the health, the, um, the performance of the container when we build applications inside the container. And same goes with the VM and network, right? Okay, so these are the data types that application insights are collecting. So. I know you have heard of this a while ago, so I'm being, um, um, I'm, uh, I'm describing trace, event, and metrics, or I'm mentioning trace, event, and metrics. So these are the major important um, data data types that application insights are uh, collecting. So trace, it's used either directly or through an adapter to implement diagnostics logging by using an instrument and instrumentation framework that is familiar to you. So it's using log4net or system that diagnostics with, with .NET. So it's basically the print or the logs that you are trying to print. So think of it as like a console log that you want um, to be um, to be available on your um, logging. So that's the trace, right? So you are just basically tracing on what is happening or what are the um, the logs inside your inside your application. So we also have the event. So this is typically used to capture user interaction with your service to analyze um, usage, usage, usage patterns. So events is more of like um, the events in your application, for example, under the routing change or the call of the functions. So this can also be traced or this also can be collected by the application insights. And lastly is the metrics. So metrics is basically um, referring to the performance of your app application. So this is the periodic scalar measure measurements. So if you want to monitor um, the health of your application, basically I'm um, referring to the performance, the CPU usage, and other related um, related criteria to um, performance. So that's basically the metric, right? Okay, so the metric data, um, how is it being collected? So this is the one I'm mentioning. So this is um, actually specific for .NET. Um, but in other applications or other frameworks as well, um, this is almost the same. So if they want to collect data that is related to total machine, CPU, so that's the processor time. So this is actually the um, the path that where they can collect. 
So it also collects the, sh um, the amount of physical, physical memory in bytes um, available to process running on the computer. So basically, this, this is also measuring if the memory is still enough. So um, the rate of input output operations and the rate of request process an by an application, the rate of exceptions thrown by an application, and the average request ex execution time. So um, if you will see the metrics that are written here, so it um, it is mo mostly referring to the performance of the application. So these are just some. These are just some of the metrics that are being collected by the application insights. All right. So um, the collected telemetry. So these are the more specific um, data or telemetries that are being collected by the application insights. So um, we can actually connect server web apps. Basically, these are the backend applications um, to application insights. And at the same time, you can also connect front end applications. So from server web apps, what does application insights collect? So that's the HTTP request. That's the basic one. So we can actually see all of the HTTP requests happening to our application. So you can see it one by one. And you can also use live metrics for that to use or to check what are the incoming requests in real time. Then we can also um, detect the dependencies, the calls of SQL databases, the HTTP calls to external services, um, if you're using Azure Cosmos DB, Azure Table Storage, or Azure Blood Storage, and Azure Queue Storage. So we can actually all detect the calls inside the services inside Azure. So even in calls to SQL databases, you can we can see all of the queries happening. Um, how long does the query it takes to be successful? Or is there a bottleneck on the queries? So these are also visible in Azure Open Telemetry. So exceptions and track stack traces, these are also important because to know if there are exceptions happening to our HTTP request. And we can also add stack traces um, for debugging purposes. Then we also have performance counters. So this is referring to the metrics. Um, we can um, use these performance counters by using Azure Monitor application, um, Azure Monitoring for VMs if you're using virtual machine, and um, for Azure Application Insights Collected Writer. So these are basically referring to the metrics for the IO usage, for the memory, and for the CPU. Then um, next is the custom events and metrics that you code. So um, these are basically the custom e events that you define on your application. So basically, these are the routes. These are the, um, the function clicks or any other events that happens in your application. So this can also be integrated or, or um, customized by your application. And lastly, to trace logs if you configure the appropriate collector. So these are the things that are being collected and interpreted with uh, application insights. And if you want also to monitor your front end application, so you can also use application insights. So um, FYI, guys, uh, front end applications or client um, web pages you you will not use Otel SDK because Otel SDK are only for um, backend applications. So Otel SDK has its own collector and exporter. So it's basically used for server web apps or for APIs. And you are not um, you will not be able to use Otel for um, front end frameworks or web web pages. So you will just use the application inside SDK when you want to integrate application insights in your front end framework. So for example, you, you want to detect Angular, you want to integrate React with application insights, just use the application insights SDK to integrate um, the application insights platform directly on your app. So um, going back, what are the things that are collected um, to applications or application insights in using your front end or integrating your client web pages? So it's the uncut exemptions, exceptions in your app. Um, including information on stack trace, exception details, and the line and column number of error, the URL where error was raised, and the network dependency request made by your um, fetch or request. So basically, it can detect the exceptions um, from your front end application. So these are not just exceptions um, for HTTP, HTTP request, but for example, if you throw an error, 
on your function. So it will also be detected or collected by the application insights. So um, yeah, uh, for the request, so what will be the available information for your request if you have, um, or if application insight has detected some errors? So it it will um, it will display the URL of dependency source, the command and method used to request the dependency, how long is the request um, have took, so the result code and success status of the request or the error status, and ID of the user making the request and the correlation context where request is made. So yeah, for example, the IP, um, the IP address, the, um, the headers, the Chrome, the browser that is, that is used to make the request. So everything will be there. So you will have more information that will be helpful for you to debug this kind of error. Okay, right. Okay, so um, I know there's a lot of words, but later on I will show you a a very ex um very basic example on how does application insights look like so so i will go onto the portal of azure and you will see the different things that our application insights offer but just to give you a background on what are the features of application insights so these are just some of the features i would say the features that i've used for applications application insights to monitor my, my application so the first one is under the investigate. So it's named investigate because it's basically for investigating what happens to your app. So we have the application dashboard. Um, it's just like a summary of the health and performance of your application. We have an application map. Um, it's like the visual overview of an application architecture and the components that are involved in running your application. So these are the servers, um, the fetch request, going to another server. So if you are running microservices, you, so you will see all of the communication between your microservices. So that's the application map. Um, the live metrics um, from the name itself, it's a real time analytics dashboard for the insight of your application's activity and performance. So if somebody requests or somebody calls an API on your microservice, so this will be automatically logged and you will see that. And um, you will see all of the real-time requests happen in your application. So this actually helped us with the hacking incident. So we can see that there's a live hacking um, scenario that is happening or there's a live hacking session happening in our app because we can see that there's a lot of um, requests going in in our live metrics. Then we also have the transaction search. Um, this is um, useful if you want to diagnose transaction to identify issues and optimize performance. And we also have the avail availability view. So you can actually test your application if it's responsive or if it's still available for your application endpoints or your um, URL endpoints. Then you also have the failures view and performance view. So failures view is just to list down all of the failures um, on your application. And you can also uh, debug on what is happening on the errors that you are encountering. And a performance view is for the metrics and the potential bottlenecks that is happening on your application, right? Then we also have the monitoring. So this is also helpful for me um, because if you remember my story, I also have alerts on my um, on my uh, laptop or on my phone. So if you have alerts being configured or configured on your application, so it will alert that something's not right. So that's how alert works on application insights. So you can actually customize the alerts that you want. Um, what are the things that you need to alert on? So it has a range of aspects for your application to trigger, trigger various alerts that will be helpful for you to know what are the things that needs attention. And we also have the metrics. So this is like the live metrics, but this is not, um, the only difference is it's not live, so it has a delay. So it it's more of like collection of the data. So it it you can but you can deep deep dive on the metrics data to understand usage usage patterns and trends. So we also have the diagnostic settings. So it's basically for the platform logs and uh, metrics where you want to put it, and the logs. So basically, these are just like the console logs or the print or the custom prints that we want to see. So 
these are the data collected for the monitoring logs of Azure and um, the workbook. So this is for um, for your own um, visualization. So if you want to have reports on what is happening, so you can actually create reports and visualize um, your monitoring data based on your needs and requirements. Okay, then we also have the usage. So these are the users, sessions, and events. So um, the only things that I've used this is the first um, bullet. So this is where we can actually determine how many users are viewing your application or using your application and the sessions um, that are currently on on your application. And you also have the events. So as I mentioned, events are more of um, a custom events or the route events that happens on your application. So you can also detect that on the application insights. So um, we also have the funnels, uh, flows, and cohorts, but I rarely use this three. But um, for the funnels, so it's just like um, identify where users progress or drop off in the funnel. So for example, the users connects and um, it drops on a specific time. So you can also detect that on the application insights. So in the flows, um, it's actually more of the analytics. So it can allow you to identify the engagement area. So this is more of like a heat map um, for the flows. So you will know where the user um, mostly clicks or there's like a heat map for you to know where the user is like um, visiting the most pages. So you can also see that as well. And lastly, the cohorts, um, this is um, the group users. So this is more of um, being used in terms of performance trou troubleshooting and um, the trend identification. This is used by flows um, to identify the users. What are the behaviors of the users? Okay. Then lastly is the code analysis. So the profiler, code opt optimization, and snapshot debugger. So it's not just about the performance of the application, application right? But it's also um, detecting the quality of your application. So the first one is the profiler. So it's actually also re um, referring to the viewing of performance of your traces. So yeah, it's a profiler, right? So it's um, we can also use this on the browser as well. But the profiler of application insights, this is more, um, this is more, uh, how can I say that, uh, more extensive, and um, it has a lot more features compared to the brow the profiler that we are using in browser. So you can actually also test um, the performance of your app application using this profiler. So. Um, we also have code optimizations. I believe this is a new one because this uses AI. Um, I haven't used this, but it allows you just to create better and efficient applications in terms of code. So um, it's more of like uh, analyzing your code and um, what are the things that you need to improve. So um, it's more of like a sonar lint or a sonar cube that I haven't used this, but um, we can explore about uh, this code optimization. And it's very interesting that you have also code optimization on your application insights. And lastly is um, the snapshot debugger. So it's just a, a snapshots of your debugging, uh, uh, of your debuggers. So if an exception occur, um, this, only, this is only available in .NET application. So um, this is more of like um, having a replace on your app. So, uh, it allows you to know when and where the exception happened. So this is more of like having more visibility where to look at. So that's how that snapshot debugger works, right? So yeah, um, this is actually the overview on the application insights. So we have um, the instrumentation. So that's the instrumented application. And for the instrumented application, for example, it's .NET, um, Java, or whatever application that we have. So we have a cloud endpoints. So this is actually the live metrics ingestion and the telemetry ingestion endpoint, which where um, the data is being brought to. So this is more of like the API endpoint um, to collect the data. And it will be stored in the database for the metric store and log analytics. and if that data is collected, so on the experience side, so it will be interpreted. 
So we have the monitoring for the alerts, the application map, and the live metrics. So everything will be implemented or interpreted rather here in the experience. So this is basically the application insights. So you don't have to deep dive on what happens here. Um, the importance is where to know where the data is coming from and what is the flow of um, the data. So the last um, destination is basically the application insights where we see the data in a more interpreted manner, right? Okay, so yeah, um, hotel versus app insights. So I think I have mentioned this a while ago already, but basically hotel and app insights, they're both um, telemetries. The only difference is App Insights, it has its own SDK, but Azure is already recommending that we should shift to OTEL Distro or OTEL SDK because App Insight SDK, um, it's only bound to application insights. So if you are using application insights on your backend, so you should shift to the OTEL SDK already. But if on front end or if on JavaScript, React, Angular, um, it's still using App Insight SDK, and we're not supposed to use Otel SDK and because that will not basically work. Otel SDK is basically for web server apps. So um, App Insights is still continuously being used for front-end application because this is the instrumentation that we need to use for um, web or client pages or basically our front-end application. So basically, that's the main difference of this Otel and App Insights. So we're still using both um, both SDK. Um, it's just uh, the only difference is Otel is for backend and the App Insights SDK is still for the front end. And other than that, we will be still using the App Insights platform to interpret our Otel collected data. Right. Okay. Hey, so as I have mentioned, Otel is a standard telemetry API. So if you will search Open Telemetry, so there's like a website that explains what is Open Telemetry and why is the standard. Basically, it just outputs or it just collects a data with a standard schema or a standard um, format for um, different platforms. And App Insights is basically for App Insights. So App Insights SDK is for the App Insights platform. So the, the output of App Insights can only be interpreted with the App Insights platform. Basically, that's the main difference that we have. Right. So, yeah, that's it um, about my... Um, talkative talk so i have i have so much things that i have mentioned to you guys so you might be wondering uh, what is the um, what is the actual look of this um application insights and hotel sdk so i will just give you a basic example on how this um application insights work and what is um the look of the application insights so okay so yeah as gordon ramsay says i am about to show you how it's done so here, uh, I just created a simple Angular application. So this is an Angular application example. So this is for front end. So this is not using Otel. As I mentioned, Otel is not for front end or client web pages, but it's for back end. So the only thing that we need to do, um, I just I already created this. This is actually for um, this is actually an example from Microsoft. So I will not code it anymore because this will take too much time. Um, but I will just run through the code that we have. So I will just uh i will just zoom in in then i will just run through the code that we have right now so it's very easy for us to um, set up our telemetry or to connect our portal azure or application insights in our angular application this is, this is an angular application so what we did is we just created a telemetry service so in this case so we are we are using a an Angular plugin. So this is an SDK, an application inside SDK provided by Microsoft. So it's under at Microsoft. And this provides all of the things that we need for us to connect our application insights. So we have the Angular plugin, the application insights, Angular plugin error service. So if there's an error that happened or that happens on your web or your web application, so this will be connected or this will be detected by the um by the application insights. So we just need to inject that services that is being provided by the application insights. And we need to create a new insight or we need to create a new instance rather for the application insights. And 
that's it. We just have, we just need to um, set the connection string for the Angular application. And we also need to define the router. So this is for the router tracking. So if you want to track the router as well, and that's it. We just need to call the load app insights. And that's how easy it is to connect our Azure. So the connection string, this will actually come from the portal or the Azure portal. So this is the application insights. And um, after you have configured your Angular application, so we need to go to the Azure portal. So if you are new to the Azure portal, um, you just have to search for the application insights. So um, FYI guys, app, Azure Insight, application insights is under um, the Azure monitor. So you will see all of the insights here. Um, if you remember, uh, I showed you four insights. So that's the application insights, container insights, VM insights, and network insights. So we will be using the application insights because we will be monitoring an application. So I already created two, but I will just show you how to create an application insights. So it's just basically click, click, click at the click. So it's a click of a button and just setting up your um, application insight. So just use a subscription, so speaker demo. So um, choose your resource group. So if you are using a resource group, if you are um, de deploying your applications um, in a single resource group, so I would recommend that your application insights should be on the same user, um, same resource group. So that's um, the standard way, right? Then let's have a name inside demo Java. Then place a region where your application insights will be deployed. So I will just say, um, let's say Europe, West Europe, because I'm on Netherlands. Then select a log analytics workspace. I'll just create a new one. Then that's it. So you can actually deploy your application insights. So let's just wait for a moment. So if we try to create it, and this will be deployed, and it will after this you will have the instrumentation key, and you can just connect it into your Angular application. So let's just wait for the deployment. But um, I already have an example, so let's check the example that we have. So let's go to the insight demo. So this is actually connected to our application already. So I just connected it a while ago. So let's see. So in some cases, um, the data, it has a delay because it just, it still needs to interpret the data. It still needs to collect it. But um, here, let's go back in the inside demo. Yeah, so I'll zoom this in for you guys. So we have the dashboard. So you can see that there are um, dashboard in here. So if you have failed request, server response time, um, the server request and the availability availability of the application. So you can actually um, see it here on the dashboard. So um, you can actually unpin it or you can actually um, customize the dashboard that you have. And um, other stuff that I explained. So we have it here. Um, so the first one is the investigate. So I'm not sure if you still remember it. So these are the, um, these are the, um, the features that application insights have that I mentioned a while ago. So we have the application map. <clears throat> oh, it's not connected. I connected to the other one. So let's go here inside there. There. So you can see here that there's an application map. So it just basically, um, uh, it just basically ha creates a map for your application. So for example, um, the application has initialized. So this is the initialization and it goes to the monitor. So this is the Azure monitor that collects the data. So it fetch and this is what basically happens on your application. So this is more of like the overview. So if there's a lot of events, there's a lot of things going on in your application, this is like a big, big map that you will see. So right now we have a very simple application. It's just um, it's just 
a single a simple angular app so you can see it here so but you can see now that it is connected to our application so we also have um the live metrics so this is still on demo because uh, we haven't connected it we haven't connected it yet but you will see here um if uh, you are using otel on your backend application so you will see a real time uh request and the duration so you can see it here on the demo um and yeah it's like the incoming and outgoing request that is real time so um if you are configured otel on your node or your java or on your .NET, so you will have a real time um, plots here and real time um, fluctuation of your CPU committed memory and dependency calls. So also um, we have some the availability. So it's not yet there because I just had um, I just have uh, connected it a while ago. Then. We also have some performance monitoring. So the good thing about here is, yeah, if you try to look at the graphs, so you will see if you are if your application is, um, if it's available or if it's going down. So for example, in a specific span of time, so you will have like um, different um, ways on how to interpret the data. Okay. So another one we have the alerts. So here, you can actually create your own alerts as well. So for example, you want to have a, a specific alert rule. So select signal, so the availability. So if your application is not available anymore, so you can actually set it here. So for example, the threshold, um, it should um, if it's static and the aggregation type. So the also the time, span or the time where you want to check so when to evaluate so it's check every five minutes so if your app is appli uh, application is still available so application insight will just check your data if it's still or your application rather is still available so you can also set that up and this will actually um uh this is actually uh creating alerts for you to be notified if something's wrong with your application right Okay, so we also have some usage. So I will not show everything, guys, because we're running out of time. But these are the things that you can see on your um, hotel. So we also have like events. So right now we have eight events that are um, stored already in our portal. So if you want to have view more insights, so you can see it here. So this is just a test. So I already cost. Um, I already checked it or I already uh, configured an our Angular application. So in some event, so you will see here all of the logs that you um, configured in your application. So you can see here that um, this is a sever severity level information. So in some cases, so if you also have an error on your application, so you will also see it here. Right. So yeah, um, that's like, the overview of this portal. So there are a lot of advanced ways on how you can um, manage your hotel. So it depends on your requirements on what are the things that you will see. So you can see here that there is really a lot of things. Um, there's really a lot of things that you can manage or you can monitor here. So you can even create your own queries, um, for example, on uh, the logs itself as well. So you can also create your queries if you want to check all of the data. So these are the tables, so the availability results, the browser timings, the custom events, the custom metrics, this dependencies, exceptions, and other uh, other items or other data that is being collected by um, Otel. So you can also create your queries um, if you want to customize the things that you can see. So yeah, if you want to have um, the metrics as well, so there's really a lot. So, but it's basically um, monitoring the performance and the health of your application. So, yeah, um, that's it. So, uh, this is just like an overview. But if you want to explore more, so I've already created some um, links or already have some references uh, for 
Hotel. So we have the Microsoft Learn. So you can actually see it here. So if you are using a specific framework, so Hotel is um Hotel is actually being embraced um with um in Azure. So it's not yet fully implemented in other um in other frameworks. So you can actually see it here. So if you're using .NET, what are the available things that are being collected now for Hotel? Um, for Node.js, for Python and Java, I think Java is has the um, has the most recent updates right now. So you can see it here on our Microsoft Learn. So yeah, this is um, a documentation for you guys, depending on the framework. So right now it's available for .NET, Node, Python, and Java. Um, for application SDK, so it's already available for a long time. So you can use it on um, on different frameworks already, especially on front end frameworks. But um, it should not be used. Uh, well, you can use it on backend applications for the SDK of Application Insight, but Microsoft is already um, suggesting that you should move to the um, Open Telemetry SDK. So this is called Open Telemetry Distro. So yeah, um, we also have different um, doc documentation. So this is the um, the monitoring, the Azure monitoring for Azure resource and um, how to set up your applications with application insights and open telemetry distro. So you can see a lot of examples here on how to um, how to set up your monitoring. Then if you are using already uh, application insights, so you can actually migrate application insights SDK to open telemetry distro. So they they have different um tutorials if you're using a specific frame framework so you can actually check it here out as well so if you're already using application insights sdk and if you want to migrate to open telemetry distro so i've already included these links um for you guys um yes uh, i i will share the slides later on i can share the slides this is actually a public um slide so you can be able to review all of the things that i have mentioned here all right so yeah um that's just about the things um i can share because we have a limited amount of time for um for hotel so these are the references that you can have um for azure open telemetry so um azure open telemetry it's a lot i can show everything i can sh i can um i can have all of the setup and configuration but you can actually explore yourself so you already have an overview on what azure um open telemetry is so um, you can check the references from Microsoft Learn, but there are also other people that are sharing stuff from Azure Open Telemetry on how can they um, set it up. Because um, in some cases, they are focusing on one feature of Azure Open Telemetry. So I think that's um, that's more of like a very specific way of learning each features of Azure Open Telemetry. So that's also a good stuff for you guys to start with. And Yes, that's it for my talk, guys. Um, I hope you learned a lot, even though there's a lot of information to digest. And um, if you want to connect with me, I'm a, I'm a mentor, so I am uh, available in LinkedIn. So this is my LinkedIn. And I also have a website. So if you want to contact me, so just uh, fill out the form there. I have, I have my own form in my website. And yeah, um, I'm very happy to connect with you guys. Right. And that's it. Um, thank you very much for attending this event. And I hope you really like it. And if you have any questions, then I think this is time for the question and answer portion. Hey, right. thank you guys. Thank you, CG. Thank you. Thank you so much for the session. So I think there was some couple of questions in the chat box, uh, which was asked previously. Mm. Yep, I think I saw some questions a while ago. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think there's one question. 
Um, wait, let's go from the top. Oh uh, yeah, can we get the slide from the trainer? Yeah, sure. Um, this is public. I can share it with you guys. I will wait. I will share it already, so I will not forget. Oh, chat is available. I can't. Anyway, I'll just share it with Surag later. Mm -hmm. Andrew. Yeah, open the. Okay, there's a question from Sir Franz Alverio. I don't know if I'm scratching the surface. Please correct me. I think of OTA as a structure and system that delivers the daily to timely reports or data or performance of employees using application. Then the data is used. Oh, okay. So the KPI, no, it's not really. So it's not really monitoring the users or the employees, but it's more of monitoring the application itself. So um, it's basically uh, checking the health of your application. So it's really important for enterprise. Um, why? Because uh, I'm not sure if you heard of the things that um, if your application is down for like 10 seconds for Facebook, it's like it will be costing them millions of dollars, right? So it's better to spend your money with hotel instead of spending millions of dollars when your application is down. So it's more of like um, a prevention on some chaotic stuff that can happen on your apps. So that's basically hotel. So it's not the performance of the employees. Uh, it's more of the performance of the application itself. So that's the answer for um, for the question of Sir Friends. Okay. So next. Yeah, um, does hotel has limitation? I'm not sure from Sir Vincent. So I'm not sure what limitations you are referring to. Maybe the collected data, but you can actually define the limitations um, for OTEL. So for example, um, what are the things that you only want to collect? And there's a sampling data because if you make it to 100%, um, the cost will, yeah, it, just, it will just spike, right? So we just have to create your own limitations that, okay, for example, the options request, I should not get this or it should not be collected. What are the things that we only need to collect? Should we still collect? Um, the warnings, or you should just collect the errors, and um, you can actually define that on the SDK, right? So we just have to define a percentage of sampling for instrumentation. So that's the limitation. But um, you can create your own limitations. But for the collection, if you make it into the default, so um, the things that we defined a while ago in the presentation, so that will be collected. All of it will be collected. So any other questions, guys? OK, so from uh, Gahendra, Gajendra. Uh, so I'm new at programming. I know basic HTML, CSS, but I want to learn, but I'm not able to focus on pro programming. Can you suggest me tips? So I'm addicted at social media. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a problem for a lot of people, actually. But um, if you really want to start, then yeah. Um, at first, it will be hard, but um, I would say uh, use tutorials that are very interactive because for me, for example, I want to learn something. It's really hard for me to learn by just reading it, right? So my tip for you is use interactive tutorials that forces you to learn in terms of doing it practically or doing it interactively. So what I meant is, for example, it's a, it's a tutorial. So it forces you to create a project, right? So it it's more interesting because you're creating output and you can even use that as your own por portfolio. Uh, okay, I created this project with this tutorial, right? So that's really good. And um, there's an output, there's a result. It's instead of just reading the material. So that's my tip. So it's easier for us to start. Um, another tip is uh, learn programming in different platforms. I would say um, like HackerRank or Code Wars, because yeah, this will boost your brains, um, especially in creating algorithms. It's important to learn algorithms first before learning frameworks, right? So that's that's my opinion. Um, it will really boost up your skills in problem solving. So yeah. Um, 
you can actually use that as you, you can follow my tips if you want because that's how i started so i'm if i'm not doing anything i am just going to other platforms like hacker rank um, codility or any other platforms that that is related to programming or programming um solving algorithms and yeah um from that i learned i learned from it and um i can also give you some um link i'm always giving to, to i will i'm always giving this link to other people especially if, when i'm mentoring people or having sessions so i can i can chat here but it's roadmap.sh so um it actually gives you an idea on where to start um for example you want to be a full stack or you want to be a front end you have to be a devops so there are actually specific i can share it actually here so roadmap.sh so there are a lot of um, role-based roadmaps. So you can actually check um, the things that you need to learn. For example, you are very interested to be a back-end developer or maybe just a front-end developer. So you will see all of the things that you need to learn step-by-step step here. So this, are the, this is a really good guide. So um, the purple checks, this is the recommendation. Um, the green check is an alternative option. So you can, you can actually um pick between the green or blue so the gray ones is you can learn it but it's not strict so you can learn it anytime so you will see a lot of the things that you need to learn so don't stress yourself out so this is a step by step you don't have to learn um everything here but it's a good start for you guys or um a good thing for you where to start on learning or becoming a front-end developer for example so that's it yeah all right more question, guys. Is there any more questions? Yep. I think you don't have any more questions, guys. So, yeah. Um, if you have more questions outside the talk, so please feel free to message me. So, yeah, I will be able to see that on my email. And yeah, if you don't have any more questions. Um, yeah, thank you very much again for attending um, this session, and I hope you learned a lot from um, from my topic. Thank you, thank you, CG, for the session. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And I also shared all the link that the certificate and uh, the community and the code with our guide sign up. All of it is shared, so make sure you check it out. And I will also share the slide over the email. If you register for the session, uh, you will get it over there. Um, that's it uh, for the session. If there is any more queries, maybe you can join the community and ask it there. There are a lot of people there, which you can, you know, which who can help you with the questions. And uh, also, I shared CG's uh, LinkedIn over the chat box. Feel free to check him and connect with him. If there's any more questions. Uh, that's it for the day. We took a few 15 more minutes, but I think I. I hope that helped everybody here to kind of get more knowledge. So that's it, everyone. Thank you for joining on us on our weekend. And I hope you gained some knowledge and I'll see you in the upcoming sessions. Again, thank you for CG for taking the time and you know sharing the knowledge. It takes a lot of effort to prepare the session and the talk and uh, deliver it. So you know, thank you for CG. Uh, yep. Okay, that's it, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.